Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're answering the question today as we continue the sermon series, is Christianity reasonable? Does it make a lot of sense? My thoughts think of a story I read recently where a dishonest manager was interviewing for a certain position at his corporation. And the first man came in, and this is what the dishonest manager asked him. What is two plus two? And the applicant said, well, two plus two, that's obvious. The answer is four. And the dishonest manager said, well, um, thanks for your answer. We may get back in touch with you. Don't call us. We'll call you. The next applicant came in. The dishonest manager asked, what's two plus two? And this applicant said, well, that depends. 2 plus 2 is 4, but you could say, what's 1.5 plus 2.5, that's 4. Or what's 1 plus 3, that's 4. Or what's 0.5 plus 3.5, that's 4. There's different variables to the question, and there's different variables to the answer. And the dishonest manager thought that was a pretty good answer, and he said, well, we may be back in touch with you. The third applicant came in. And he said, the dishonest manager asked the question, what's two plus two? And the applicant said, what do you want the answer to be? (laughs) And the dishonest manager hired him on the spot. Today we answer the question, is Christianity reasonable? Does it make sense? And the answer to that question all depends on what people want the answer to be. You see, Christianity is reasonable. It makes sense if Christianity provides the answer that people are looking for. If they're looking for the answer is that the cross of Jesus provides, that the empty tomb of Jesus provides, then indeed Christianity is reasonable, it makes sense, and people are saying, I'm all in. But if it doesn't agree with what people reason out Christianity ought to be like, they oftentimes check out of the process, won't listen to the witness because it doesn't make sense to them. The text that we have before us today talks about that. The cross of Christ is a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. And oh my goodness, how true that was in Jesus' day. The historian Tacitus said that Christianity was nothing but pernicious superstition. How many of you have heard of Sigmund Freud? Yeah, Sigmund Freud said this, that Christianity, religion in general, and Christianity in particular, is psychotic illness. And then look at this quote from Janet Reno, former Attorney General under President Bill Clinton. A cultist is one who has a strong belief in the Bible and the second coming of Christ, who frequently attends Bible studies, who has a high level of financial giving to a Christian cause, who homeschools their children, who has accumulated survival foods, and has a strong belief in the Second Amendment, and who distresses big government. Any of these may qualify a person as a cultist. Do you know what I say to that? If you're a believer in Christ, welcome to the cult. (laughs) I mean, how ridiculous it is for someone to say something like that, that those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ are cultists. Now, why is that? Why do so many people believe that Christianity is not reasonable? Here's why. Because they're not looking at life through the lens of Scripture. They're not interpreting the events that happen in everyday life through the lens of the Bible. And if a person trusts in the Bible and believes in its authority, then guess what? Christianity is very reasonable to people. Here's the first point I want to share. Is Christianity reasonable? It's reasonable if we relinquish control of our lives. Well, guess what? A lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to give God charge of their life. You ever seen the bumper sticker that says this? God is my co-pilot? How many of you see that bumper sticker? Okay, do you know what I like better? The bumper sticker that says, if God is your co-pilot, change seats. (laughs) 
You see, the Bible says that we are not our own. We were bought at a price. What price was paid to make you a child of God? The precious blood of Christ. And now, when you believe in Christ, you're under the control, domain, and authority, and kingship, and lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is it not right? Yeah. And so we say, my life belongs to Christ. But that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Do you know why? Because Christianity is not the way they want it to be. It doesn't fit the mold, the conceptual mold that they have of Christianity. The Bible says that Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. Back in Jesus' day, oh boy, did the Jews follow Jesus when he was doing amazing things. When he cleansed lepers, when he walked on water, when he stilled the storm, when he raised the dead, when he changed water into wine, when he fed 5,000 people with a couple loaves of bread and fish. Oh my goodness, people flocked around him until he was crucified. Then people checked out. They said, this doesn't make sense. If Jesus is really the Son of God, then how in the world could he allow himself to be crucified? And see, this is the way Christianity is for a lot of people here today. Not necessarily in our congregation, but in our culture. They want Jesus to fit the mold of what they think he ought to be and what they think he ought to do. And when Jesus doesn't come through the way they think he ought, when he doesn't do what they want him to do, when they want him to do it, guess what? They say, Christianity does not make any sense and I'm checking out. I can't figure it out. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now we believe that Jesus Christ had to be lifted up on a cross to die for our sins, amen? amen? That the penalty for sin was a sacrificial, holy, perfect, unblemished life. And that Jesus had to be sacrificed on the cross for us in our behalf and God laid on him the iniquity of us all. Why do we believe that? And why does that make sense? Because we look at Christianity through the lens of Scripture. And when you look at Christianity through the lens of Scripture, guess what? It's reasonable. It makes sense. It fits the mold of what we want it to look like. And we also know that Christianity is reasonable when we look at the lens of Scripture to figure out the chaos and disturbance and the turbulence of life. Why is there evil and sickness and suffering and pain and death in this world? If you look at it through the reasonableness of Scripture, you've got it figured out. You know why things don't go right in your life. You know why sometimes when you pray, things don't always fall into place. You know why sometimes people offend you and sometimes there's injustices that come your way in life that doesn't seem fair. Why is that? It's because of one simple three-letter word that people in our culture do not like to hear. What is that word? It starts with the letter S. Sin. sin. And where did sin get started? Sin got started by Adam and Eve. And God told Adam and Eve, if you obey me, if you don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, everything in your life will be good. But guess what? They rebelled against God. They sinned against God. And ever since then, rebellion has been a part of human nature. And the way God intercedes is through His Son. Because sin had to be paid for. And God's answer was to send his son as an unblemished, holy sacrifice for our sin. And when we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, repent of our sin and put our trust in Christ, we know our sins are washed away and life begins to make sense. Listen to this. Jesus did not come into this world to take away our ills. Isn't that right? Can I get an amen? Jesus did not come into this world to take away our ills. Rather, he came into this world to take away our sin. 
and to tell us that there's going to be a day. There is going to be a day when everything will be restored, when everything will be perfect, when everything will be brought back to its original state, and when will that happen? When Christ comes back. And we understand that. That makes, quote, sense to us. But unless we look at life through the lens of Scripture, Christianity makes absolutely no sense. And that's why the Bible says the cross of Christ is a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. And it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit working in a person's life breaking down their stubborn resisting will, giving them the eyes of faith to perceive who Jesus is, why he came, what he did, and what he's gonna do someday when he comes back, that Christianity can make sense. Otherwise, it is not reasonable. And that's why you have statements like we heard from Janet Reno. So Christianity is reasonable if we relinquish control of our lives and we submit to the authority of God's word and realize that Christ is in charge of our lives. But Christianity also is reasonable if we allow scripture to describe who God is and what he's like and we've kind of already done that. And then Christianity is reasonable if we allow scripture to describe who we are and what we are like. Have you ever heard somebody, when you're first introduced to them, say something like this? Hi, I'm so-and-so, and I cheated on my wife 15 years ago. You ever hear that? Or, hi, nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. I am the most selfish person you will ever meet. Or, hello, my name is, and then they say their name, I really like your house. It's a lot bigger than mine. Can I have it? <laughs> Why don't we ever hear that stuff? Because, we, because people like to give the perception that they have life wired, that they have it figured out. We like to give the impression to people around us that we're good folks. But the bottom line is, we're not good folks. <coughs> We're sinful. We sin against God by thought, word, and deed, by what we do and leave undone. <coughs> Sometimes nobody knows our thoughts. Nobody knows our actions. Nobody hears our words, at least we think, except for God. And God can look at our stubborn, resisting heart. He can see our rebellious nature. And he knows that we deserve nothing but eternal condemnation. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's not one among us, not one among us here today that does good and sins not. All our righteousness is as filthy rags before God because God can see our sin. He knows our shortcomings. He can examine our faults and he understands that we fall short of his glory. We fall short of his standard revealed in the Ten Commandments. You see, Christianity is reasonable if we look at life through the lens of Scripture and we see ourselves as we really are. Sinful people who deserve no good favors from God. Why is it that so many people in life have this kind of ownership mentality that God owes us things? That simply because we exist, our life ought to be good and God owes us stuff. I, one of the things that drives me nuts is commercials I see where it says, you deserve this, <laughs> whatever it is. Have you seen that commercial by Cons? You deserve it? At Cons, have you, have you heard that? What, what do we deserve? No good thing. Eternal separation from God because of our rebelliousness. That's what we deserve, but God in his infinite mercy and grace has saved us and redeemed us and given us forgiveness and eternal life through his son. Look at this quote from Billy Joel. How many of you have heard of Billy Joel? Yeah, great singer. He's been around about 40 years. I used to listen to his CDs. Listen to this. <clears throat> I viewed the whole business of the cross as a lot of very enthralling hocus pocus. There's a guy nailed to a cross and dripping blood 
and everyone is blaming themselves for that man's torment? But I said to myself, forget it. I had no hand in the evil. I have no original sin. There is no blood of any martyr on my hands. I pass on all of this. He's a spokesman for a lot of people who don't want to see themselves as they really are. Who don't want to see their fails, failings and their weaknesses. But we have failings and weaknesses. And yes, we could say that our sin nailed Jesus to the cross, but better yet said, it should have been us deserving to die on the cross. But Jesus stepped in and took our place. And all I can say is, how cool is that? And as a result of Jesus stepping in and taking our place on the cross, forgiveness is offered to us today. Peace with God is offered to us today. The presence of Jesus walking with us through the highs and lows of life is offered to us today. And a better life through faith in Jesus Christ is coming our way all because of what we have done, right? I said that to see if you're paying attention. All because of what? Because of what Christ has done. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. What did we just say? I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. Trusting only thee. Trusting thee for full salvation. Great and free. Salvation is a free gift offered to us through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And the only reason you can believe that is because you've examined life and the cross of Jesus through the lens of Scripture. And as a result of that, it makes sense. It's reasonable. Now, I know that I'm preaching to some people here today who don't believe. And I know that you interact with people, those of you who are believers here today, with people who don't believe. And the question I think we need to ask is this. How's things working out for you? <laughs> How's that life without Christ going for you? Are you able to sleep at night? Or do you have sleepless nights wondering what's going to happen when you die? Because as Pastor Tim said so boldly and so beautifully last week, hell is a real place. And real people go there. And unless a person repents of their sin and puts their trust in Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, they are eternally separated from God and will end up in a real place called hell. On the other hand, if a person repents of their sin and puts their trust in, yes, the martyr, the one who took our place on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, unless a person trusts in that, they will not have eternal life. But if a person trusts in that, they do have eternal life. They do have forgiveness. They do have peace with God. And they have the presence of Jesus in their life, 365, 24-7. Christianity... You've heard me say this before. Christianity is not a way out of life. It is a way through life. And only through faith in Jesus do we know what meets us on the other, st other side, and we know it will be glorious. Is Christianity reasonable? I pray that for every one of us here today, examining the life of Christ through the lens of Scripture, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we say, yeah, makes sense to me. It's the answer I'm looking for in life. Amen? Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus for the power of the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us, giving us life and salvation in your name. Thank you, Jesus, that despite our sin, you still love us exponentially more than we can ever think or imagine. 
We pray, Lord Jesus, for people today that don't know you, that don't claim you as Savior, who look at life apart from the lens of Scripture and believe that it's not reasonable, that it doesn't make sense. And really, the only way that Christianity can really make sense is if we examine what life is all about through Holy Scripture. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have taught us some things today, hopefully that we didn't know before. And Lord, we pray today for people that may be on the fence regarding Christianity, people who don't believe it's reasonable. Lord Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, reach out to them, touch their hearts, break down their stubborn, resisting will, give them power to believe in you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, as we believe in you, keep us strong in the faith. Continue to feed our faith through word and sacrament. Help us to run the race to eternal life to completion so that someday we might receive the victor's crown of eternal life for all those who have trusted in Christ as their Savior and Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds, your faith in Christ Jesus, unto life everlasting. Amen.